Hello everyone, we are back for tutorial number two. Today we're going to learn about the market and we're going to learn about um, extraction. Now if you've made it to this tutorial, it means that you've at least survived the very initial stages of the game and you're looking to dig a little bit deeper. And you also survived my pay to win speech, which I give to a lot of people in every game that's pay to win because free to play is just, it's not true. But whatever, I, I won't go on a tangent on that because <laughs> I could talk about it all day. All right, so first things first, let's talk about the market. The market system is pretty easy, but it has some weird quirks. You're gonna, now that you have your 516 silver, or maybe you've done a couple more cargo runs since we, since we last talked, um, you're looking to spend some money. So let's uh, spend some money. Up here, your little scales are going to be your market. If you're in a settlement, when you click on those scales, it's going to say this settlement's market and uh, by default. However, you can go to all markets. It will explore all markets within, I want to say, 20 miles. I believe it's 20 miles. And uh, I'll show you the difference here. So if we go here, this settlement's market, let's say uh, we want to go to ships. In Shelter, which was where we last left off, we've only got access to the Shibe MK2 balloon. This is a relic from back in the old days when everything was bought with gold. There's only a few available for gold, which is not what we want. So let's go to all markets. There we go. There's all the newbie balloons. There's a whole bunch of them in Steel Nargval, Dark Nargval, and then some old relics from the past still available for gold. One gold is worth roughly 100 silver. It can be worth less or more depending on how good of a deal you find. But that's a, that's equivalent to 1,000 silver. Not really worth it when you could just get them for 300. However, we're not going to buy a ship because we're in a ship. Why would we do that? Let's switch on over. You can look at some of the other ships if you want. Uh, if you're new and you're looking for a fast ship that does go up to 4K, the Sutler is your best choice. It's a really great ship. It comes with a little level 4 demon. It does not come with an engine. You'll have to buy an engine for it. Uh, but we'll get into that in another tutorial. Anyway, there's a bunch of things you can buy in the market, but there's a few things I want to draw your attention to because, again, I want to make you entirely aware of the difference between gold and silver early on in the game so you aren't surprised. So down here is magic items. Unlike um, unlike other items like resources and such, magic are all about the pay to win. Okay, here it is. Here's that dark, ugly side of the game that you've been looking for and you've been saying, okay, what's the part of the game that I'm going to hate and I'm going to run away and never come back? Well, this might be it, um, but stick with me. Hopefully you don't leave. It's up to you though. They don't pay me to do this. <laughs> so uh, here we're going to go through a couple magic item lists items and I will explain to you what they do and why they're sometimes important sometimes not really. There's only one magic item that is absolutely important to you as a player and that is going to be defense crystals. I've put a bunch of them on the market and I believe some of my guildmates have for silver so that you don't have to pay gold because hey I, I'm all about trying to find a way to win without ever putting a penny into it. Go for it man. I will seed the market with thousand silver stuff just for you. So uh, 1,000 silver for a single defensive crystal or 10 gold. Personally, I just I just pay 10 gold. That's that's actually uh, that's actually your pay to win money right here. Uh, what it does is it gives you 1 million extra health. That doesn't really mean anything. What that actually does is it gives your ship 1 million shields. It doesn't give you actual hull. It gives you shields. And you'll see it when we apply one in, a, in another tutorial that uh, this is hit before your actual hull is hit. The reason this matters is uh, to repair your ship takes a lot of time, takes a lot of resources. It's just easier to keep defensive crystals on your ship at all times so you never have to repair your ship and you just have to pump out a little bit of money every time you need more shield. So we're gonna we're gonna buy something on the market just to show you how it happens. We're not gonna buy magic items right now because we're still in a safe area. Uh, oh, let me give you a quick explanation of these other ones. Ruby needles increase your speed up to 70% if you've got the skill for it, which we'll talk about skills as well. Uh, Leap is like a get out of jail free card. It's a very expensive item, but it it uh, teleports you uh, 
30 miles, I believe it is, 30 miles away from your current position in a random direction. If you're out in the middle of pirate areas where it's very dangerous, this is a good thing to have to try to escape. Mana. Mana, of course, uh, just recharges your mana. We're going we're gonna to explain how magic is used in this game in just a minute here. Lightning, Chain of Lightning, it should really be called Chain Lightning, but this is a Russian-made game, so some of the translation's kind of wonky. Um, chain of Lightning is a pretty cool skill when you have the skill level for it. It uses a lot of mana, but it does a million damage, between 200,000 and a million damage to any enemy target within, uh, I want to say, five miles. Small Chain Lightning is just a half version of that. Dragon Horns are going to be useful for when we do dragon hunting, which I'll explain in a minute, uh, in another tutorial. There's, there's going to be a lot of tutorials because there's a whole lot to this game. It's a very difficult game, as I said. There's a lot of depth to it. There are areas of it that really need work, such as, um, well, such as the economy. <laughs> but uh, if you can get past all that and you can just enjoy the game for what it is, uh, your, your input is always welcome with the developers. They do seem to listen. Sometimes they don't go with your suggestions, but they definitely will answer every single suggestion you make. All right, and then trophies are dragon pieces, and anyway, I'm gonna get out of there because I could just talk about the economy forever. First things first, we um, we want to learn extraction. We want to learn how are we gonna make money outside of these achievements. Right now, our next achievement is to actually dig up 30 tons of resources. So let's do that because it's a free thousand silver. But we still want to learn how to become self-sufficient. So let's go to our ship, take off. And I'm going to explain to you all about resource extraction. Down here is exploration. By hitting R, you get to open up information about resources. It says no resources found because you don't have the skill for it. Now we're going to talk about skills. This is another area that is not pay to win, but it can be if, you, if you're Mr. Moneybags and you just want to throw a bunch of money at the problem. Uh, personally, I don't. I don't like to waste money on skills, but hey, if you got the money you want to spend it, I'm, I'm sure the developers will love you. So we're going to want to extract some resources to make our next bit of silver, but we need to know how. The skill list is very big, and there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with it. Here, I'll go through it real quick, is your Strekalit tree. Strekalit is their word for fighters, fighter pilots, uh, like think World War II era P-51 Mustang. That's what a lot of them look like, all the way back to World War I era biplanes, slop with camel and such. Uh, you can go all down this line, and Strex are kind of like drones in EVE Online. You can have up to, I want to say, 20, maybe 16 of them. I, I have to look up the skill. I've had the skill for so long on my main character, I don't really bother to look anymore. But uh, let's see here. Command, here we go. Up to five. It's, it's 16 total. I know it says 5, but the level 3 skill is 16. So, Strekalip skills. The pilotage skill lets you control more than one ship using navigation systems, which are like autopilots. Oops, we don't want to learn it. Um, exploration is what we're going to learn. In fact, we're going to start that while I'm talking. It's a one hour skill. Personally, I think that's a little overkill. One hour for like the very first skill you need to use. But, whatever. It is what it is. So we're going to start that skill and I'm going to continue explaining these other ones as we go. Here is going to be all of your production skills. You can tell because they have little hammers above them. The hammers tell you what you can build. Uh, mechanic is for engines and then there's weapons. You can go all down those skill trees and it's very similar to EVE Online where the skills are time based. So the more difficult or the more effective the skill I'm going to zoom out here, it's kind of noisy, isn't it? Uh, the more effective the skill, the longer it's going to take you. The longest skill that I know of is down here. It's armor production. I just finished level 5, and that's a 20, 29 day skill. Really long skill, but hey, in EVE, I mean, there's skills that take half a year, so not so bad. They've actually decreased the skill learning time on everything. Uh, we move on. There's going to be planning. That's for producing um, base materials like uh, turning timber into boards, things like that. You're going to have explosive ordnance is for making bombs and missiles and such down here. Planner is for having settlements under your control. I'm going to teach you about settlements in another tutorial 
if you make it to that tutorial, you've almost guaranteed put in five bucks into the game because settlements are kind of expensive. But they're not necessary to play the game. Uh, and then ma battle magic is just your mana level. It goes up to level 15. Currently we have 100 mana. We can get up to 1600 mana. This is your mana recharge. Lightning, very good in PvP. Stiletto, which bypasses a player's shields and damages their hull. That's also very important in PvP, uh, even PvE, really. Then we've got Leak, which we just spoke about. We've got Dragon Call for summoning dragons. We'll get to that one in the future. And Ruby Needles, which is a huge speed increase. One new change they just made literally a couple hours ago and added to the game is Glide. Glide is, think of it as warp in EVE Online, where you warp across a system. That's what Glide is. It increases your speed three times plus, depending on your level. Very effective skill. I just used it earlier, but you'll get to see it in another tutorial on one of my characters that are already trained up to it. Okay, so we're learning ex exploration. However, I don't want to wait an hour to give you this tutorial, so I'm going to show you how to rush a skill. And this does cost real money. It costs gold. You don't need to rush it, don't feel like you have to do that, but for the purposes of the tutorial, I will show you how to rush. So we just click on this little check mark here. It's going to cost us 287 gold to rush it for one hour, which is like 10 cents worth of time. It may not sound like a lot, but it will add up if you do this a lot, so uh, be careful. So now we've learned level one of exploration, meaning we can see up to 25% concentrations of resources. Now that we've done that, I'm going to learn extraction level one so that I can extract more. That's just a six minute skill. If I want to rush that, it's just 30 gold. Not so bad. I'll do it one more time, but I'm not going to rush it this time. Okay, and again, you don't have to rush it. In the interim, you, you can do cargo contracts and make money that way. But the first hour of the game, you're going to have to sit around and wait for exploration if you don't rush. You'll have to do other stuff. Like I said, cargo contracts. So now if I open the exploration panel, suddenly here's a bunch of resources available. Food, which is food, obviously. Ima, which is their word for oil. Flogiston, which is, I, I don't know why they call it that, but it's their word for coal. Flog is coal. We all just call it flog. Sometimes we call it coal. And uh, there's other things. There's sulprit, which is sulfur. There's uh, timber. And building stone, which is very important for castles and upgrading high-level settlements. And I'm sure I'm missing a few off the top of my head. Oh, mithrite, which is... Like, you remember Mithril from Lord of the Rings? I'm pretty sure that's what they modeled it after. It's just super powerful metal. And, of course, iron ore. So here in Nargval, none of that stuff is available because it's a starter city. There's not much we can mine up here. So we're going to go to ex exploration by hitting R or just clicking here. We see there's 25% food, 25% Ima. There's probably more, but since our skill is only level 1, we can only see up to 25% concentrations. Let's zoom in real close on our ship. We're going to use the extraction ability. Now is when we start... To make money for ourselves. Remember I said I'm going to show you how to make your own money. Sorry about that sound. I'm going to show you how to make your own money. This is how to do it. See that's what I get for keeping work email on while making a tutorial video. Alright so let's extract some food in Ima and you can't choose what you extract it just picks up everything and the more types of resources there are the more mana it will cost you. It's roughly 10 mana per resource type. So if I hit extraction once, bam, 50. Okay, so it's about 13 mana per resource. It took me, it took about half of my mana away. So how do I pick up these resources? There they are kind of floating in midair like ghosts. Well, I just use the lift key, G. And you don't have to click right on it. In fact, I recommend you click to the side of it, or otherwise it tries to select it. Uh, G, click. G, click. There we go. You see all the stuff that we picked up here on the right? If we go to our cargo hold, here it is. We got 47 food, 332 Ima, and so on. Yet, it still says 25% of each, meaning there's probably more than that, again, because of our skill restrictions. 
and we're gonna extract again. It still says 25%, so let's extract again. And it still says it after that, so I have a feeling that, uh, oh, see, 24. We're starting to cut into the food now. There's probably eh, about 5% 5, 5 over that. So now let's pick up all this stuff we got. G click like a crazy person, by the way, to do this. Oh, see, I selected it. Now I can't do that. Let's try that again. Okay, and hit escape once you're deselected all that. All right, now we've got twice as much Ima and a little bit of everything else in our... There's that building stone we were talking about. Sometimes if it's 0%, it will still pick up a very tiny trace amount of something. Okay, we're going to mine until that Ima is below 25%. Gotta wait for some mana. By the way, the game is actually much quieter. Um, near the cities, you've got all these Strex flying around, and they're really super loud. Remember, I got my game at like 10% volume, so <laughs> I do recommend you turn your volume down while playing. There we go. I'm at 24, meaning uh, we've stripped it down to not so much. And with each pull, the amount I get is less and less and less. So at 24%, it's not even worth the mana to do it. It's easier to just fly to another node. Nodes are not indicated by any particular marker on your map. You just have to kind of eyeball. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. So let's do this. Uh, here's a little secret trick of the trade that some of the veterans like myself use when we're doing mining for Ima. When you go to the water, there's usually one or two resource types only meaning it's a lot cheaper to extract things in the water. And in the case of south of Nargval, it's mostly Ima slash oil, whatever you want to call it. So it costs less mana to pick it all up. As you start out, if you don't want to do contracts, extraction and refining is your next best bet. So we're just going to head a little bit south here. Here we are. We're at just two resource types. I'm on food, meaning it's going to be a little bit cheaper. So I'm going to show you the difference in what we extract with each pull. So I hit B. Now let's just pull this up. All right, 378 Ima. Now if I hit B again, three hundred and fifty-one Ima. Now, I don't think I can hit it again because I don't have enough mana, but we'll, we'll try it one more time. Just wait for mana to regen for a moment. Three hundred and twenty-three. So you see with each pull, I take out less and less from the ground. Um, if you if you are more of the mining type, you want to do this sort of stuff, there is a fortune to be made from it uh, as you get to the higher levels. So I would definitely recommend you get exploration to at least level 3. Shouldn't take too long, probably half a day. And then get extraction up to level 9 or 10, as high as you can, because what it does is the higher level it is, the more you pull per hit. So I'll show you in a moment here. I'll hop over to uh, my other character. Now, I'll show you in another tutorial, rather. I'll call it Advanced Mining, but um, I have a character who's got max skills in mining, and you'll see the huge difference, like 10 times as much resource. And remember I said this game does not favor noobs? It's very true. At lower levels, you're not going to make much money. You're not going to extract very much, but it does improve over time. All right, so let's go back home and see what we can do with all these resources. Alright, so again, we're going to click on the docking bay, click on our balloon, and it automatically opens the hold of our balloon, but how do we transfer that to the city? Let's go to the hold over here. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, it just shows the hold until you click the hold in the control panel. Then it shows your hold next to what's in the city, which currently is nothing. So we're going to move all this over. 
We're going to close that out because we're no longer interested in what's in the balloon because it's empty. Now we're going to go to our flight center. Again, if you're human, it's going to look a little different. We're going to click on the warehouse, which is also L. L just means cargo. You think it, they make it C, but that's cool. Whatever. All right, so cargo bay, warehouse, whatever you want to call it. Here's all of our stuff. What do we do with this? Can we sell it? Can we refine it? Well, let's go back to the market and let's go to resources. Resources are base. Timber, Ima, which is oil. I'm just going to start calling it oil so you guys don't get confused. Timber, oil, iron ore, sulfur, food, building stone, mithrite, phlogiston, which is coal, and then gold nuggets, which you can randomly find on the ground and are worth an absolute fortune. Good luck ever finding one, but if you do, get to a base before somebody kills you. And don't tell anyone in chat that you found it unless you're in a safe area. <laughs> Because you might get ganked, just like in EVE Online, if you said, hey, I got a cap ship blueprint, someone's going to come and try to wreck you. Alright, so uh, here we are. Let's go to, it looks like the most we gathered was uh, oil, IMA. Okay, so the settlement, this is where the market gets a little confusing. The top section is what the NPCs, or player characters as well, basically this is the sell area. This is what they are selling things to you for. The best deal currently available is 9,310 IMA for 7 silver. We could afford that, but why would we do that when we could just mine it? Alright, and then the best purchase price in this settlement is 2,000 IMA, 2,000 oil, for 1 silver. Now it seems like, god, we just did all that extracting, that was a lot of work for nothing. For 1 silver, that's what am I going to do with 1 silver? And you're right. Like I said, at lower levels, you're not going to make much money doing extracting. Extracting is, uh, that's a skill you want to work on when you go to bed, let it cook overnight because it's exponential how much you're going to make from that. Let's go to all markets and see if there's a better deal. Nope, still 2000 for one at the uh, settlement to the south. So we could sell this for one silver and hey, we got one silver, but why, why do that when we could do 16 contracts at a time? That's a good question. Well, if we move to materials, I can start to show you what happens when you refine down the goods that you picked up. From Ima goes Imanit, and uh, I just know this from experience. You can look it up, but uh, Imanit is derived by distillation, serves for these engines, but it's distilled from Ima. Ima becomes Imanit. Imanit becomes Imanol, like alcohol, sort of. And then uh, Imanol becomes Imanol Ether, which is like, uh, yeah, I don't know, jet fuel, I guess. It's very valuable, but not really worth it to refine. So looks like uh, our next stage for Ima is going to be Imanit. Let's go back down here. For this, it's only 637 Imanit for one silver. And uh, that seems like a better deal. Now, I don't know if the settlements have refining facilities in uh, the minor minor cities because we're in a minor city at the moment okay they have forge shops warehouses stores arsenal shops woodwork shops yeah they don't appear to have I'm a refining but we'll go through these other refining ones to explain what they mean. So in the past, uh, any of you who are returning from 2016 remember that players could not refine anything, build anything, or do anything unless they had a settlement which costed tons of money. And they left in droves because they said, hey, this is pay to win. I can't do anything at all from the start. Everything costs money. And they were right. However, they've changed that. The devs have actually made it so that you can do base level building, refining, research, and development. There's a lot of things you can do at NPC cities. You don't have to buy your own shop. Like, for example, the arsenal shop. We can now make missiles and ammo. Here's a 150 charge, 140, if we have all the materials. Which we don't. We'd still need, uh, I'm a flog. Yeah, we don't have gunpowder. We'd have to make some gunpowder to do that. Which is also made in uh, the same place that you make I'm in it. Anyway, so uh, you can refine down... Let's say wood. There it is. There's our 
mine. There should also be a timber mill around here somewhere. There it is, woodwork shop. So from our woodwork shop, we can actually take 27 phlogiston and 760 silver or er, uh, timber and turn it into boards, 506 boards, and sell those boards for a lot more money. I'm going to cover more on refining and making money from mining in a future tutorial, but it is good to know that you can at least do a little bit of that in the city. You don't have to pay real money to do that. Um, they're kind of giving you a taste of what it's like, so you go, hey, this is cool. I want to spend actual money on having my own base where I can make a lot more money. So, you know, typical free-to-play system where they kind of bait your appetite and then reel you in. So again, I said I would be totally honest with you, and I am. All right, so let me give you a couple other controls before we finish our tutorial. We're almost done with love with uh, step two. You also notice we finished training level two of resource extraction. So I'm gonna put Mr. Newbie character here on level three. That'll take 38 minutes, so that'll be in the future. But a quick thing on the controls, you already know about contracts, here they are. You'll also notice there are more expensive contracts popping up now. Two silver, two silver, two silver, because we're now a level two pilot. That's interesting, I got a cargo contract to Zatar even though I didn't choose it. That may be part of the new player experience. All right. So contracts you're already aware of, market you already know about. Uh, you can explore the market all you want. There's a lot of stuff in there and I, I could spend an hour talking about the tons of different items on the market, iron, mithril plates, things like that. Um, okay, and then here is gonna be relations, all of your friends and enemies. We have no friends and enemies because we're just some loser named Test1. Who wants to be friends with a guy named Test1? And then here's your chat box click on this and uh, here's our chat all chat is all chat English Russian you'll notice most of the chat is done in Russian during the Russian primetime hours this is a Russian game so they have a very large Russian audience um, myself and a handful of players are the English audience pretty much in its entirety so we'd love if you come and join us so we can help fix that and make a very large English audience and then Deutsch French Espanol, Italia, Portuguese, these uh, these channels aren't really used. I haven't seen players from those <clears throat> those language groups talk in there, but if you do speak those languages as your native tongue, feel free to talk in them and hope somebody answers. All right, close that out. Oh, and your chat window won't be where mine is. Yours will be like on the right. I put it in the middle because, I don't know, it feels more MMO-like to have it there. But it is totally movable. You can uh, You can move it this you can readjust the size by taking the chat area doing that taking the slider area just to the left of it sliding it that way uh, but I, I choose to keep mine right there right about there and it will save your settings when you bring it back it's still in the same spot all right over here is gonna be guild we don't have a guild I mean I have a guild but this character does not but if you're in a guild, it will show all your guild members and their ranks. And if you're invited to a guild, this will be blinking for you. This is your map, as we saw in the, in the previous tutorial. And the area we've explored so far has been this tiny little section. Seriously, this is a huge map. And I actually just had a conversation with one of the developers, and he is talking about very soon in the future, they are expanding this map, I'm guessing out here. They're expanding this map to make it even bigger. This is a huge freaking game. If you've played EVE Online, if you played EVE Online back in the early days, you might remember you used to have to warp to a gate, you'd be 15 kilometers off the gate, and then you'd have to slow boat it all the way to the gate. Imagine slow boating everywhere. <laughs> it's, it's really big. I like it. I like that it's a big game. Uh, some people are turned off by that. They want quick action, arcade style gameplay. That is not this game. All right, next is your mail. We already saw that. That's my mail about winning all that silver. And last but not least is your property tab. This shows every every single item that you own everywhere. We're on a brand new character, so all we own is our balloon. If you and it's parked here in shelter, but if you click on shelter, 
Here's all the food and random stuff that we picked up that we dropped into the settlement. Okay, all right, so that's your basic controls um, and also a little bit of the market and a little bit of extraction. For Extraction Mark II, I'm going to move on to one of my other characters so that I won't waste your time and I can show you what Extraction actually looks like from a very, very high level character and how it can be very profitable, but it really gets profitable when you get your own settlement and you start to refine and build your own stuff. And I mean like tens of thousands of silver. I, I had a buddy who is in our guild and he just finished a supply run, made 150,000 silver. Sounds like it's impossible, but believe me, it is. It just takes a little bit of time to get to that point. All right, so I will be back for tutorial number three, advanced extraction and refining and building, and I don't know, insert other items here. Thanks, guys.